Well, good morning, Salem Baptist Church, and good morning, West Tennessee. Happy Easter morning to you. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Well, here I sit on Easter Sunday morning, April the 12th, 2020, at Salem Baptist Church in Trenton, Tennessee, inside an empty sanctuary. <laughs> As you know, the coronavirus has us on shutdown, and we're unable to get together. So today, for Easter Sunday, we were going to meet and have drive-in church, meet outside, and uh, stay in your car and bring to you a message through your car radio. However, God had different plans. There's thunderstorms all over West Tennessee. And because of the severe rain and the thunderstorms, we're unable to even get together uh, with drive-in church. But we can still get together via the radio and the internet. And so I am grateful for YouTube and Facebook and the technology to be able to come to you. It's just not the same, though, sitting in this sanctuary in God's house on Easter Sunday. Uh, it may not be the same because we can't be together as friends, as a family, but it is still the same because Jesus Christ is alive. That tomb is still empty. He defeated death. He conquered the grave. He has uh, paid the debt for our sin, and he's alive and well. Jesus is alive, and he's coming back again one day, and I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready to meet him. Well, though we can't be together in person, we can still be together as a church, and we're going to celebrate the resurrection story today. I want to read to you this morning the resurrection story. Uh, my favorite uh, passage is found in the book of Luke, Dr. Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 24. So if you have your Bible, I encourage you to follow along as I read, or if not, just listen as I read God's Word. Luke 24, beginning in verse 1, this is the resurrection story. The Bible says, now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, that would have been Sunday, early on Sunday morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and they found that the stone was rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And so it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this. That behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. These were angels, two angels from God. And then as they were afraid and they bowed their faces to the earth, the angel said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise again? And they remembered his words. This is the resurrection story. The women went to the tomb to take spices to anoint the body of Jesus Christ. And uh, when they got there, they discovered that he was alive. Well, this is the resurrection story. Now I want to read to you the resurrection reason. Uh, continuing Luke chapter 24, beginning in verse 44. Uh, the Bible says, Then Jesus said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you. Now this is the resurrected Jesus speaking to his disciples. He's raised from the dead. He's talking to him face to face. He says, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. In other words, all the prophecies written about him in the Old Testament. And so he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. And then he said to them, thus it is written and thus it is necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Well, the resurrection story is in the beginning of Luke. The resurrection reason is in the end of the Gospel of Luke. And he tells us very clearly that the resurrection, the reason for it is it was necessary. It was necessary for Jesus to be uh, crucified and to three days later be erased from the dead. Well, this morning, very quickly, I just want to give you a short devotional uh, and identify and draw your attention to the uniqueness of the resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is certainly very unique. It's so unique, his is the only one. <laughs> He's the only one to be raised from the dead to never die again. Now, there's been some resurrections but those folks have died. 
uh, a second time. Jesus is the first fruit. The Bible tells us he's the first fruit of the resurrection to be raised from the dead and to never die again. Well, there's five factors I want to identify this morning which makes this resurrection unique. It's the uniqueness of the resurrection, and there's five factors of uniqueness. Factor number one, what makes the resurrection unique? Factor number one is it's physically impossible. I mean, for someone to die and be raised from the dead, it is physically impossible. It's physically impossible with man, in the power of man. There's no man anywhere at any time before or now or that will come. There's no man in his own power, in his own physical power, able to raise himself or anyone else from the dead. If we could have, we would have, right? But it is physically impossible with man. That's what makes the resurrection of Jesus Christ unique is because a resurrection is physically impossible. But remember this, but with God, nothing is impossible. And if you agree with that, say amen. What makes the resurrection unique? Well, number one, it's physically impossible, but yet it happened. Jesus was raised from the dead. Well, unique factor number two is, not only is it physically impossible, number two is it's intellectually unbelievable. Because it is physically impossible, it is also intellectually unbelievable. I mean, in the confines of our own human mind, the resurrection of Jesus Christ or the resurrection of anyone, as far as that goes, is simply intellectually unbelievable. I mean, it is impossible for our mind to believe it because we are in the confines of human uh, intellect. Because believing it takes more than human intellect anyway. Believing it takes faith. You see, we don't believe the resurrection simply because of human intellect. Based only on uh, the intellect of our minds, it is unbelievable. But we don't believe it based on intellect alone. We believe it on faith. See, it takes more than intellect. It takes faith. The Bible's very clear. For by grace are you saved through faith. We must believe it in order to receive it. Salvation comes from believing the fact of the resurrection, not simply in the intellectual uh, factor. That's why so many educated folks, so many highly educated folks, would refer to themselves as an atheist because they're so reliant just on what their human mind, they're so reliant just on what they can comprehend, their own personal logic, that it's difficult for them to step out on the faith. They, they trust their intellect alone. Speaking of uh, intellectuals and being atheists, I heard this story about a college professor who was teaching the new college freshman class. It was the first day of college for all of these freshman uh, college students. Very first day, they were afraid a little bit, a little bit intimidated. Here was this professor at the front of the room, and he was welcome, welcoming them to their first day of college, and he began with this. He says, students, I am an atheist. So I have a PhD. I'm very educated. I'm very intelligent, and I am an atheist. And if you want to do well in my class, you will be an atheist too. Now, which one of you would agree with me that you are an atheist? Well, every one of them in the class raised their hand because they didn't want to disappoint the professor and they wanted to get a good grade. So every one of them raised their hand when he asked which one of them are atheists. Everyone raised their hand, that is, except one young lady. One young lady did not raise her hand. So naturally, the professor kind of locked in on her and said, so I know she didn't raise your hand. I, I assume you're not an atheist. To which she says, no, sir, I, I am not an atheist. He goes, well, then I, I would guess you would call yourself a Christian. To which she replied, yes, sir, I am. I am a Christian. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. He goes, well, then, in a very condescending uh, uh, tone, uh, trying to ridicule her and embarrass her in front of all the classmates. He goes, well, then why don't you just tell us why you are a Christian? She said, well, the reason I'm a Christian is because my parents were Christians. My brothers and sisters are Christians. My grandparents are Christians. My aunts and uncles, everybody in my family, and, and they taught me about Christ, and therefore, I'm a Christian. To which the professor said, well, then, let's just suppose 
your parents were idiots and your brothers and sisters were idiots and your grandparents and your aunts and uncles were all idiots. Would you be an idiot too? To which she replied, no, sir, I'd be an atheist. <laughs> well, it takes more than human intellect uh, to be a follower of Christ and a believer of the resurrection. It takes faith. But just because it takes faith doesn't mean we are to throw out our intellect. It doesn't mean we approach it blindly. We can still have faith that's built on logic and intellect. For instance, the resurrected Jesus Christ appeared to over 500 people after his resurrection. We have the eyewitness record, eyewitnesses to the resurrected Jesus Christ. So we don't have to approach it blindly. We don't have to dumb down our intellect to believe, but it takes more than just intellect. It takes faith. So one reason that the um, resurrection is unique is because number one, it's, it's physically impossible. Number two, it's intellectually unbelievable, but yet it happened. Well, another factor that makes it unique is number three. It is spiritually essential, spiritually essential. Listen to verse 46 again of Luke chapter 24. It says this, Then Jesus said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it is necessary. It is necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Jesus says that his resurrection is necessary. It is necessarily essential. You see, spiritually speaking, the resurrection is spiritually essential. Now, it's spiritually essential for our salvation process. Now, the crucifixion is essential for salvation as well because the crucifixion pays for our salvation, but the resurrection provides our salvation. See, they're both essential. You can't separate. The crucifixion, the shedding of the blood is where uh, the payment that God accepts for the forgiveness of our sins. There can be no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. And so Jesus' blood was shed on our behalf. That's our payment, but the resurrection is the provision of our salvation. It's the resurrection that brings to us the reward of salvation. We too will be raised from the dead and experience the reward of Jesus' resurrection when we experience our resurrection. Therefore, what makes the resurrection unique? Well, what makes it unique is because it is spiritually essential. Well, number four, it is personally unavoidable. Personally unavoidable. The Bible says in Hebrews 9, verse 27, it is appointed for man to die once, and after this, the judgment. Every man will die, every man, woman, boy, and girl will die, and every person will stand in judgment before a holy God. Well, what will God judge us on? He's going to judge us on what we did with the gospel message of Jesus Christ, what we did with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Did we believe it or did we deny it? You see, our salvation is determined on how we approach the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's why Easter Sunday is so significant to us. I mean, Romans 10, 9 says very clearly that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So believing the resurrection is essential to our salvation process. It is personally unavoidable. You must choose what you, you can't deny it, you can't ignore it. You must give it an account. Now, to ignore it is to choose no. So it is an unavoidable decision. That's what makes it so unique. It's personally unavoidable. We must decide personally about the resurrection. Well, the uniqueness of the resurrection is unique because of number one, it's, it's personally impossible. That's what makes it so unique, but yet it happened. Number two, it's intellectually unbelievable. That's what makes it so unique, but yet it happened. Number three, it is spiritually essential, essential for our salvation. Number four, it is personally unavoidable. We must decide. And finally, number five, the resurrection is universally available. It is universal. It's universally available. Let me read to you verse 47 of Luke 24. And it says, And that the repentance and remission of sin should be preached in Jesus' name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. It should be preached to all nations. It's available to everyone. 
For God desires that none should perish, but all come to repentance. For whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For God so loved the world, it says, that he gave his only begotten son. The salvation that Jesus' resurrection provides is available to everyone. It's available to you. It's available to me. It's available to everyone. Amen and amen. The question is, what will you do about it? What will you do about it? Let me tell you, that resurrection has changed my life. So every Easter is very special to me personally. Unfortunately, we can't be together today in person, but we can be together in spirit and we can rally around the common truth that has changed our life. Jesus Christ came in the world. He died on the cross for our sins, making atonement for the sin of the entire world. And three days later, he arose from the dead. And whoever believes that message and repents of their sin and asks Jesus Christ to be their Savior, they will be saved. They will be saved. I've done that. As a 10-year-old boy, I did that. And he's changed my life. The question is, have you done that? Don't let this day just be another day. Sunday is a special day anyway. It's the Lord's Day. Sunday should be different than every day of the week. But especially today, Easter Sunday, that's the day we commemorate the resurrection of our Savior. It's unique. It's a unique resurrection. His is the only one. But one day, all of us will experience those of us who have given our heart to Jesus Christ. I hope you have. Happy Easter to you. He is risen. He is risen indeed. May God's blessings be on you. Let me pray for you. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for the fact of the resurrection. Lord, you came, you lived, you died, you were buried. And three days later, you arose victorious over death in the grave. And God, we know that you ever live seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us. Lord, thank you for your mercy and your forgiveness. And we look forward to the day of your return when we can be joined together with you in your house forever for all of eternity. Lord, my prayer is that today would be special in the heart of every Christian across this world, across this planet. May there be celebration in the hearts of every redeemed person. But in addition to that, God, I pray that the lost will be drawn to you in salvation. Lord, we lift you up. May you do the drawing to you. Thank you for what you're going to do, God. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. And amen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy Easter to you.